Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here today. Ain't no day like the re release day. Thank you everyone for getting your download on on the MX Linux. Uh, new release. Check out DistroWatch. The post is up. There's torrents up. All the mirrors are populated now, or at least most of them. I think there's some problem with Taiwan's mirror or something, but it's getting there. So let's talk about live USBs. Now one of the things that MX Linux inherits from the Annex project is the live USB system. What I mean by a live USB. So for those of you that don't know what a live USB is, this, imagine, well you know how when you make uh, make an install media with one of these guys, with one of these USB sticks, okay? This is just a 4 gig SanDisk cruiser, cheapy from Walmart. That makes, it's install, it's handy install media, you don't have to burn a disk or anything, you just install it off the stick. This is great. Well, the Annex program, the Annex project, uh, of which MX Linux is based on, lets you run your whole system off of this, mm, similar to the way you would run Puppy Linux or something like that, with with all the persistence that the nerds speak. They call the they call the the way this works persistence. Basically, what it is, you have a compressed file system for the Linux operating system. Something that normally takes six gigs is compressed down to yeah one. Okay. And so it has to be, it's a special file system. Well, we can run the entire system off of that. In fact, I've shot videos off of the live USB, and none of you have noticed that I've been running the live USB. That's how good our live USB is. Um, so what I'm going to show you how to make one with all the cool persistence options. Now, a lot of websites you'll tell, you go to, you'll tell you use a, a utility called DD. And actually, if you go to our website on the download page, we also have a command for DD. I like to think of that as a failsafe. DD always works. What DD does is it makes, it basically takes this, which should be rewritable media, and turns it into a freaking CD. Okay, that's what DD does. So when all the pers if you make your disk with DD or with a tool that uses a DD-like system, and you'll know because they usually call it DD. I don't even know what DD stands for. It stands direct something probably. I have no idea. All I know is it makes disk images. Okay, so if you put if you take a ISO, a hybrid ISO like our disks are, and actually most Linux ISOs are, and use DD to burn it to a, di a USB stick, what you're really getting is a CD on or a DVD in this case on a stick. You can't write to the disk afterwards, and it takes up the whole disk. It's fine if you can't get a regular USB to work. <sighs> it solves a lot of problems with different boot systems and that kind of thing. So it's the fallback. If you want something a little fancier, if you want something that you can run, actually run a system off of, um, well, this system will do it for you. Now, I'm running on the MX-16. This is my MX-16 system. Let me shrink my photo down here. Do, 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 do. And I've shrunk down to my smaller size. And we are, I'm going to show you how to make this disk. Now, I'm going to use the tools that are available on MX-16. Now, you say, well, but... Dolphin, D-O, I'm on Windows. How do I do it on Windows? Well, you can use a tool called Rufus, which works really nice on Windows. You can actually use UNet Bootin, um, at least as of version, I think it's 625. Uh, older versions, like maybe even 580 something, which is what I was using before in Windows, wouldn't work. It didn't support our bootloader um, on the live system. But... This the 600 series does so get the latest one if you go, if you're on Windows get the latest UNet bootin or get Rufus which Rufus is still really nice uh, I still have a couple of issues with you new UNet bootin's uh, USB stick detection every now and then it tags a stick as a hard drive and it doesn't show it to me uh, Rufus works every time and and by the way Rufus has a DD mode if all else fails just so you know you heard it here so. Uh, so we're going to use MX's tools, though. So use those two tools. Uh, if you're booting on a UEFI system, uh, you'll need to use format your USB stick as FAT32 if you're coming from Windows. If you're coming from, uh, if you're using U MX15 or 16, uh, our tool will handle all the dirty work for you. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you our tool. So I'm going to plug this stick in. And we'll give it a second to do its thing here and find the stick. It's weird doing one of these videos in the daytime. 
Okay, so we got the, uh, there's the stick. Now, I've already used this stick for something, but don't, no worries. Our tool is going to reformat the stick automatically. So our tool will automatically format it. So I'm going to open up Live USB Maker. It's an MX tool. It's available in MX tools. It's actually an annex tool, but it, it works both ways. Okay. And you're going to get a real simple GUI. Now, there is a command line version of this tool that has some more features. But for what we're doing, the GUI tool offers enough functionality to handle it. So what is it? you're going to choose your device. Now, I only have the one device, so that's it's already selected. So I'm going to select my ISO. Uh, so let's see here. My ISO is in my downloads folder. Do, 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 do. MX final. Hi. Yes, my ISO is named a little different. And I hit enter, and off it goes. It's off to the races. It is making the stick. It's going to do everything for you. Now, we've had reports of this tool taking... Yeah, this might pop up once the new partitions are made. Just just it, it's ignore that unless you want to watch the files populate. Um, yeah, I, I've run this 100 times. That doesn't always happen. I don't know why it, it pops up, but it does. It's harmless. But uh, so we're gonna let this run. It's gonna take, eh, depending on your system, it's gonna take mm, two minutes. You might get as fast as a minute and a half. It might take you as long as four and a half. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back. Okay, we're back. We're just finishing up installing the bootloaders. This has taken me about oh two minutes, give or take a little bit. Live USB creation is successful. Huzzah! Now. Due to the limits of screen recording, I can't really reboot and show you the next part of the step if you want all the persistent stuff. But we do have a couple of tricks here in the MX and Annex world. And so we can do the same thing with VirtualBox. So I'm going to crack open VirtualBox. And we are actually going to boot the USB stick from VirtualBox. So we're going to start. Now this works if you have the same ISO. Okay, there's that. I'm going to put myself back on the screen where you can see me. Hello. So this is actually the CD, the ISO booting in VirtualBox, just like you would if you were installing onto a virtual machine. We have an F4 option. Now this is the legacy bootloader. If you're using UFI, you're going to get a series of menus instead of these little... You can't see me pointing with my hands, but instead of the function keys down here. Okay, so anyway, we're going to pick from USB because that's going to let us, as long as you're using the same ISO and the same stick, you can pull this from USB trick and it will start the bootloader from the ISO and finish with the USB stick. Now, we want persistence files, so we got the persistence options here. So this is going to let us... You know, use our USB stick like it's a regular operating system. Like it, it, it won't be a read-only file system. So what we'll have, uh, persist all actually creates two persistence files. Now you can think of these as partitions if you want a root partition and a home partition. It's actually two files sitting in one partition on the stick physically, but logically you can think about it as a root file system partition. This is like all your apps in the default file system, and then a home file system. Now the home file system is just what it sounds. It's basically your home folder. And it's it's handy um, to have those two things separate when we do some other more interesting things called remastering where we take changes of the persistence persistence file, the the root persistence file only saves changes to the uh, file system. So if you because the regular file system is a read-only blob, we're going to call that the Linux file system or Linux FS if you explore the stick file contents, you'll see it. It's a great big, you know, 900 megabyte file that's got the default file system on it. We can actually take one of our, uh, one of the tools that we include is called Remaster, and a Remaster will actually take what the changes in the root file system and home if you let it, but I don't, I don't normally do that with home, the root file system, and compress it all back up in that original ball of goo that is the Linux file system and make a new ISO out of it. Or a new, um, it'll update your USB with those changes. Use a slightly less RAM to do that. It's pretty nice because the persist all feature loads both the Linux FS, loads the persistence file into RAM, the root persistence file, the one that gets used all the time for launching apps. That file gets loaded into RAM. So depending on the speed of your computer, depending on how much RAM you have, you may or may not want to use the default that that option. Uh, persist root is exactly the same as persist all, except 
it uh, just makes a root file. It doesn't make a home file, which is fine. You still get the home folder. It's just com- inside the root FS file. Okay. Persist static is the one I normally use because one of my machines is RAM strapped, and um, uh, and it's when you're running a video or something, it's really easy to push the limits of the RAM if you're loading your persistence file into RAM. Also, if you want to make a persistence file that's larger than your RAM, this is your really your only option because that file gets loaded into RAM with the other two. So on my on my other system, I have a 128 gig USB stick that I'm using for my live. I mean, I got a 128 gig stick that I'm using for my live. Uh, I make six gigabyte persistence files. Well, my computer only has two gigs of RAM, so obviously I can't load those into RAM. So I use the static option. All static means is the files run off the USB stick, which might sound slow to you on a USB 2 system, but on a USB 3 system, there's not much difference. It's really nice. Uh, Persist Home is the same as the others, except it only makes a home file. Frugal is a little bit of a special case. It actually makes a more or less a live system on your hard drive. You still boot from the stick, but it actually runs off your hard drive. We'll hopefully cover that some other time, but it's it more or less the same situation, but it uses a hard drive partition. Okay, so I'm going to choose Persist Static because I'm boring and because I'm video recording and running VirtualBox at the same time, so I really, I really don't want to push the RAM. So we're going to push Static. And then we're going to start the default option. There's only one option to start. We're going to use default option. So we got we got from USB, we got persist static. We're going to go. So now we're taking off. It's saying from USB. It's scanning. It's found it. It's doing its thing. Now it's going to ask to create the root files, the 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 the, 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 the persistence files. All this is automatic. Uh, I'm going to take the automatic options, but you can choose custom options. Uh, there's a there's a formula that the uh, developer uses to. Uh, uh, specify these based on a percentage of the stick. Now, I warn you: if you're using a, if you're planning on remastering the system occasionally, and which is important if you're keeping up with updates on your live stick, you really need at least an eight gigabyte stick. Four is not going to do it. Four is fine for running just you know a simple thing, but if you're gonna, uh, if you really want to run it full time, get at least an eight gig stick and plan on remastering on a more, on a regular basis. Anyway, I'm gonna choose the default. Bam, it's done. Our system, if you do this on a FAT32 stick, like with Unit Bootin or or Rufus or something like that, this is going to take a really long time to make this persistence file, it, depending on the file size. It could take minutes, you know, five, ten minutes, really, depending on what size you make it. Uh, because the FAT32 file system doesn't quite support everything that the EXT4 file system does, and that's what our tool uses to make, to make the uh, USB stick. So at any rate... Uh, that's done. So now we got the home file. I'm gonna make a home persistence file. Why would you want to do that? Well, it might be handy uh, for running certain things like Wine, for instance. Yeah, you think you can run Wine off of uh, off of the live USB? I've never tried, but there's really no technical reason why you can't. Now it's gonna ask you to update your passwords because now you got persistence file, so you get your own password. Although it's still a demo account, technically speaking, uh, name wise, anyway. And that's it. Now, if you notice, that was the first boot. I mean, if you started on a USB stick, you'd be on the first boot and have your persistence files. And that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, so we're gonna boot into our desktop and uh, be done. A little sluggish, but remember, I'm recording and doing a couple other things, showing my picture up on the screen for one, and my computer. <sighs> yes, it's Core i5, but it's an old, older Core i5. And there we go. Whatever log jam we had is done. And there's our welcome screen. And we're done. We're running live. Now, with the static option, it doesn't ask you when you want to save it. If you chose one of the other options that load into RAM, uh, it will ask, ask you how often to save the file, and you can you can make things say things like save it when I tell you to, or save it when I log out, or so, uh, which or save it automatically when I log out, or ask me when I log out. Uh, there, there's three options. So you uh, check out my older persistence videos because those options are there in those videos as well. And all I got to do is choose persist all or persist root or persist home to get those options to show up when you set up the stick. So we're done. We're running persistent. If I threw Chrome on here, it'd be done. And by the way, if I ran the installer with Chrome on the stick, on a persistent stick, guess what's going to happen? It's going to install it along with everything else. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to 
mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle running live USB. Signing off. Have a great day.